Thanks again for joining me here at ButNowMinistry.org. And today we're going to go through part eight of charting Hebrews to Revelation. And like I had said in previous messages, this one I am mostly concerned about because even back in the day when I was at Harvest Translation Chapel, we used quite a few verses out of James, out of Peter, out of 1 John, and that pastor there taught many verses that, can, that were contained in those books and told the congregation that those were for them because he had a completely misunderstanding of Galatians chapter 2, verse 9 that clearly tells us in Paul's writings according to the revelation of the mystery that Peter, James, and John are ministers to the circumcision. That would not include the church, the body of Christ. And that is why C.R. Stam made such a tremendous error when he put the 12 in the body of Christ. There are just, there are dispensational rules that God has laid out that we need to follow and we need to be concerned about. And if you think that the church, the body of Christ, the free gift of God, the power of God unto salvation, okay, Without your, your law works, Galatians 2.16, without your righteous works, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, not of yourself, no boasting, Ephesians 2.8 and 9, it is a free gift of God. That means whatever you're doing in Peter, James, and John is wrong. That's not a gift. They have to do some things in Peter, James, and John. They're ministers to the circumcision. In the body of Christ, circumcision and uncircumcision is nothing. So there is a difference. Keep them apart and you will be fine. You will not think you're going through the tribulation. You'll believe the verses according to the revelation of the mystery as they stand. Because you won't be mixing them with Israel's program, which by the way is about 95% of your Bible. 5% of your Bible is the church, the body of Christ. That is why most people do not teach Paul's writings. If it were the other way around, if Paul's writings were 95% and Israel was 5%, things would be quite different today. But because context doesn't matter, because who the letters were written to doesn't matter because prophecy for Israel doesn't matter because the law that was given to Israel doesn't matter. We're in a world of hurt today in our modern Christianity, our worldview and everything else. And because of that person who decided to make Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and put them in red letters, ultimately has really hurt how Christianity is taught today. But anyway, as we go through Hebrews to Revelation, we are in point number eight. Jesus, belief in his name. His name. You have to say his name. You have to confess his name. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You have to accept Jesus in your heart. You have to raise your hand and pray the sinner's prayer and come down front. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Jesus' name. When I was in choir at Harvest, my choir teacher told me not to say the S on Jesus when we sing. It was the name. It was Jesus. Only say Jesus when you sing. Incredible. The name of Jesus in the Old and New Testament. How's that, how that has confounded us today. How that has misled us today. Because... We don't take our Bible in context. We don't have a Bible that we believe. And if we do have a translation, we correct it. And if you have not seen or heard about the correctors of the Bible, 
go through my series on no final authority and why I don't put commentaries above my Bible, the King James Bible. You have scores and scores of pastors that correct their Bible, which makes them the final authority. So this Jesus, belief in his name, right? Matthew 10, John chapter 3, John chapter 20, and Acts 4. Well, John chapter, or Matthew 10 and John chapter 3 are Old Testament. And Acts 4.12 is New Testament. John chapter 20, look that one up. Is that Old or is that New Testament? And Hebrews 9, 15 through 18 will tell you that the New Testament starts when Jesus Christ dies on the cross. So you'll have to find, and I'm not going to give you the answer, do a little homework here, but is John chapter 20 before Christ dies on the cross or after? Because if it's before, it's Old Testament. If it's after, it's New Testament for the children of Israel. So Matthew 10, 32, Whosoever there shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. And by the way, according to the revelation of the mystery from our Apostle Paul, the only time Paul mentions the word confess is when he is talking about Israel. Never the church, the body of Christ. He never tells any member of the church, the body of Christ, to confess their sin. Only when he talks about Israel. Because that's all about the prophetic program. First John tells you to confess your sin, right? And he's faithful and just to forgive your sin. Well, who's First John writing to? Who's John a writer to? Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, we get definition from our Apostle Paul. He's a minister to the circumcision. And here it is in the Old Testament in the book of Matthew. You have to confess him before men. Matthew 10, 33, But whoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. John 3, 18, He that believeth on me is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And that's the verse they forget to mention. You know, when, when I was at Harvest, Pastor James McDonald used to say, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Well, John 18 confirms that Pastor James McDonald is wrong. It says here that we're condemned already. He that believeth not is condemned already. Oops. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So much for God hating the sin and loving the sinner. Okay? If you don't believe in the prophetic program, if you didn't believe in the name of Jesus, okay, you would not have remission of sin. Okay? In the revelation of the mystery, if you do not believe that Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose again on the third day, you are then condemned already. What does Romans 5.10 say? Romans 5.10 says you're an enemy. According to the revelation of the mystery. Now in the prophetic program, if you didn't believe in the name of the only begotten Son, you're condemned already. And in... That's in the prophetic program for Israel. And in, again, according to the revelation of the mystery, if you don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, what does Paul say? If people are contrary to the doctrine, you are to mark them and avoid them, right? What does Paul say in Ephesians chapter 2? They're children of wrath. What does Paul say in Romans 5.10? You're an enemy of God. So, so much for God hating the sin and loving the sinner. That is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? John 20, verse 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Notice that word might. Do we have a word might in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery? No. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says we're complete in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3 says we have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Romans chapter 8, verses 1, says, Our faith 
is counted for righteousness. Verses 8.28 says, nothing can ever separate us from him. There's no mites when you are baptized into Christ's death and placed into the body of Christ with a dry baptism, Romans chapter 6. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1.13. So a little different than John, who's writing to the circumcision. If you believe, you might have life through his name. Acts 4.12, which is the New Testament for Israel. The Apostle Paul's not saved until Acts 9. He is Saul of Tarsus in Acts 4. And what is Saul of Tarsus doing? He's going after anybody who believes in Jesus, and he's going to kill them. That's because Peter and Paul had the same message, right? When Peter preached in Acts chapter 2? Not. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So clearly, clearly, Israel has to believe in Jesus' name. And note... Note, this is not the gospel that saves us today. Believing in Jesus' name is not the gospel that saves us today, according to the revelation of the mystery. This is the gospel that saves us today, according to the revelation of the mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory, first of all, that if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel. Is there any mention about believing in Jesus' name, whereby we must be saved? Because that's what it says in Acts 4.12 for the circumcision, for the children of Israel. I thought Peter and Paul, I thought they preached the same message. They don't. Okay, back to Jesus and his earthly ministry. We also get definition from Paul about the function of Jesus' ministry, okay? Romans 15, 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Now, Hebrews to Revelation, prophecy fulfilled, all will know the Lord. Jeremiah 31, 34. And they shall teach no more every neighbor, every man his neighbor. So notice, when they get the new covenant, the better promises, after Jesus Christ dies on the cross for them, and is buried and rose again on the third day, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, is what the cross of Christ does for the nation Israel, for Israel. That's what the book of Hebrews is about. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. That's Jeremiah prophesizing about the New Testament, the New Covenant. Ezekiel 36, 23, and Hebrews 8 also. Hebrews 8, 11 confirms the prophecy spoken of in Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 36, 23. Ezekiel 36, 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And Hebrews 8, 11 in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, for the Hebrews. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Clearly, we're not New Testament Christians. Clearly, not all know who the Lord are today, because that's what happens in the New Testament. We're not in the New Testament. We're not in the Old Testament. And by the way, those were only given to the children of Israel. Where are we at today? We are in the time of the but now, according to the revelation of the mystery, which is in God's dispensation of grace. We're in the part that interrupts Israel's program. 
We're in the part that interrupts the law and the covenant. Get that. Because when you get that, when you understand the revelation of the mystery, by rightly dividing the word of truth, which only Paul tells us to do in your Bible, you will then understand your Bible. Get that in your understanding. Get that into your understanding. And then as we continue through our study of the ten points of the coming kingdom for Israel and who's going to inherit that kingdom from Hebrews to Revelation and how the church, the body of Christ, is not present, does not belong, and never will be in that time. Um, hopefully you'll uh, see how that works. Hopefully you'll see how your Bible works. Your Bible is put together absolutely perfect from beginning to end. When you take it into context, when you understand who's talking to you, to who, when you understand the different ministries that are within your Bible, and when you understand Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Thanks again for listening. We will continue with points 9 and 10. Point 9 is pretty lengthy. That's why I'm, I'm kind of stopping it here. Point 10 will then wrap it up, and we will then start a new unit of study. But thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions. Go through my website on the contact page at buttnowministry.wix.com slash buttnowministry. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. I wanted to make one correction. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 does not say your faith is counted as righteousness like I mentioned um, earlier in this message. It says that you are not condemned when you're in Christ. There's no condemnation, which is contrary to John 3.18 that, tell, that tells the nation, that tells Israel that they're condemned already. So I just wanted to put that out there, the difference between prophecy and mystery. When you are in Christ... There is no condemnation. And we know that in the prophetic program, if they did not believe in Jesus' name, not Paul's my gospel, they were condemned already. And like I said earlier in this message, so much for God hating the sin and loving the sinner. In Israel's prophetic program, you're condemned already. And today, if you don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection that Christ paid for your sins, you're an enemy of God, you're a children of wrath, and you're not in the body of Christ. Thanks again for listening.